Hey everyone, so I'm doing a quick video, it's a bit of an announcement for a project I'm working on, and hopefully it will be something that you can buy in the future, I mean, I don't know if it's the best place to uh, announce it, I don't have a lot of subscribers or anything, but I may have more soon, um, but anyway, it's basically um, an Atmel powered watch uh, that I've been designing for uh, about a month now, and basically it's the case is 3d printed so that's uh, the first print of a case and uh, an OLED screen got drops in the front and a joystick in the bottom and then all the electronics is enclosed in there it's super small and I've been working really hard just to try and make it as small as possible so this is sort of like a, a prototype um, just for the watch I won't fire it up until it's a bit more exciting because it's just um, the basic menu things. So I've just started collecting parts ready to make 10. So I plan to make 10, um, 10 watches and see how it goes, try and raise some funds. Um, I know Kickstarter is a good way to raise funds but um, I might try Kickstarter a bit later on. I'll see how this goes first. So I'm going to make 10 and then hopefully sell them at my local Maker Faire, which is in two months. Um, but, I mean, if you're really interested, you can always uh, contact me and uh, I'll send you one if you send me the money. I'm aiming for about £30. So, uh, hopefully most of the profit raised is going to go towards buying, well, the profit and some more money will go towards buying a 3D printer. Uh, because at the minute I use the resources at my local hacker space, which is it's a uh, it's a very new sort of establishing community, but they've got some excellent equipment. There's an Ultimaker two and uh, a Rep Rap Mendel, I think it is. But uh, the, that was printed on the Rep Rap Mendel, and um, I have got some other stuff printed on the Ultimaker. Um, that was printed on the Ultimaker, that's a little light thing that I made a while ago. Uh, so they're excellent 3D printers. Oh, and another thing I invested in was the SMD rework station, so I can do the SMD soldering of the tiny chips. And this is basically my workbench where I'll be manufacturing them. I did a few other videos here about the uh, At90 PDRM316 that I'm still working on. I killed one by accident there, it is dead in the tray, but uh, I'm, I've got chips here for the watch, and then there's one in that big uh, dock thing there, uh, TQFN32, um, now I don't know whether the T, whether this chip's perfect for it because of its low flash, it's, well it's not too bad, it's 32k flash, but I'm aiming for this to be an open source watch that you can write your own code for. It's going to have Bluetooth, joystick, it might even have an accelerometer, which I forget time to think about that. Um, oh yeah, and I'm also starting college in one week today, or yesterday, sorry, one week yesterday, so. Um, the, the time that I have for this is going to be decreasing. Whilst I've had my time off after my GCSEs, I've uh, managed to find a lot of time for it, and I've got loads done. All the parts are ordered, um, but my time will gradually decrease, I guess. Um, but I'm sure I'll manage to fit time for it in the weekends. But yeah, so this chip's the Atmega 328. It's a 32K flash, but it's not excellent. So I found one that's about twice the size, maybe four times, I don't know. Um, and it has a 128K flash. So I think I'm going to have that. And it's also got all the address lines broken out. So we can put our own SRAM on there if we want. Well, I can anyway. Put the own SRAM on, and uh, so then you can have as like extra space for making your games and stuff and Bluetooth applications. And so the idea is that it you just put it on your wrist and you control all your Arduino projects. You have talked to it with your phone. Um, so imagine you've got a robot. You could communicate with it over Bluetooth. Use the joystick on the watch to drive it. You could have some cool games on the little screen and um, lots of stuff. So the idea is it's completely hackable. That's the sole aim of it. And at the minute, 
I'd, I'd like some feedback on this actually. Um, I'm not sure whether to use these Bluetooth modules for programming or to have a, a, a FTDI sort of system. I will make sure the IS, ICSP headers broken out on the board somewhere in case anyone's really into messing about with the bootloader, fuses, everything like that. I'll, uh, if you're quite advanced then you can maybe have a play around with that but it's not recommended uh, if you're just starting out. Probably the best way to start out is with uh, the standard uh, t uh, UART TTL serial stuff. So um, yeah, if you could just let me know uh, whether you think Bluetooth would be a cool thing, so you program it over Bluetooth, you have Bluetooth set up on your computer and then you have a Bluetooth set up in the watch and then you just send the code over Bluetooth or whether you think FTDI, just a normal wired c communication will be best for programming it. Now this won't affect whether it has Bluetooth or not the, this is only for whether Bluetooth is used to send code to it, so we could have both but I was just wondering whether that would be a cool idea because I mean, the FTDI chips aren't much, but there's also uh, their QFM packages, so it could be a bit annoying to solve, but I don't mind doing that. It's uh, all experience, I guess. So this is just the basic setup. All I have is a USB ASP. Uh, I'm not really... I don't really have a great big budget for this, so I've not gone fancy with the AVR... Uh, the, what is it? Oh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, AVR Mark II or something like that. The like £50 programmers. So, I'll probably uh, try and raise funds by doing these watches, and if you generous and want to help out, send some, send in some money or something, then let me know. But yeah, it's when I finish designing it, it will be open source, and you can mess about with the code, write your own code, and I, I guess maybe have a go at making one yourself. But the parts of there's a, the parts list is very long, so it, having the organized system helps, I guess. But uh, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about it. Whether you think it's a great idea or uh, whether it's a whether it should be programmed with Bluetooth or have an ST FTDI. As I say, if you want, if you think it should have FTDI, uh, you are in there. Should I? It won't affect whether it has Bluetooth or not. It's going to definitely have Bluetooth, but the FTDI is an extra add-on so that you can just plug. Plug it straight into your computer with a micro USB plug and then just program it straight with that. I was thinking it could be a bit easier because people might not all have, everyone might not have Bluetooth adapters and then there's issues with drivers not working and blah blah blah. So I just thought it could be easier to put FTDI in there. But I mean, let me know what you think. I suppose I might always be able to stretch to both. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching this video. It's dragging on a bit now. Uh, I'll do a future update when all the parts have arrived. I've only got a small amount of parts here. They should all be arriving in the next week or so. And then we'll be building a prototype, a full watch prototype on here. This is sort of like the screen Bluetooth and uh, MCU. I, I do my own PCB etching. And then these are just some prototype breakout boards for the uh, real-time clock, joystick, resistors, USB plug, and other bits and bobs. I have, I'm not going to etch all those. I just use the whole sheet. So I do my own PCB etching, as you saw in another video, but for double-sided boards, um, I think it might be best to get them manufactured somewhere, but uh, I'll see. So thanks for watching this video anyway, um, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and follow all my, all my other videos and channel and stuff. So I'll be doing another update video soon on how the watch is going, thanks for watching.